Good evening. We're here for the Public Safety Committee meeting. And can I have a roll call, please? Here. Is excused this evening? Here. Here. On his way. Can we have a motion to approve the minutes of May 6th, please? Second. All those in favor? Or any um, additions or corrections? Corrections isn't here yet. Okay. Uh, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Okay. And can – oh, we don't have a Chief Kelly report? <laughs> Good evening, Madam Chairman, <laughs> Commissioner. Uh, the Chief is on his way, so I have some fill-in until he gets here. <laughs> okay. In improv, Al. Improv. Hey. Is there certain music you would like us to play? <laughs> I didn't get a chance to look at the list, so <laughs> – uh, just a reminder, this month is our traffic points month. Uh, anybody that's interested in lawn signs, that they want to put lawn signs out on their lawn, uh, can feel free to contact the Traffic Safety Unit or their, or their commissioners, and uh, we'll be able to get those signs out to them. Uh, just a reminder that they're only to be up for the month of June and then taken down. A uh, couple notes. Uh, I just got word today that... Uh, Next week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, which will be June 8th through June 10th, uh, Toyson Avenue is, PennDOT's going to be doing some construction work there. So any residents along that stretch of Toyson Avenue between Jacobtown Road and Easton Road, uh, who park their cars in that center median are going to be, uh, that's going to be no parking from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. each one of those days. That's Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Uh, June 8th through 10th next week. Uh, they don't want anybody parked in that center median section uh, those three days between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. Uh, to go right along with that in the next several weeks also, I believe after the Tyson Avenue portion is done, uh, they are going to shut down Edge Hill Road between Easton and Jenkintown to do some construction on that section of uh, the roadway. So uh, the detour will be Tyson Avenue for that Edge Hill Road portion of the construction. So uh, be on the lookout for that, and there's probably going to be some delays there, especially morning and evening rush. Can I ask you a question about that? Sure. Yes, um, so the Tyson Road one, the first one, the road's not going to be closed off. It's just going to be... No, it's just that center median portion. They don't want anybody parked there so that their equipment can get in out of there without it too much of a problem. Okay. And then, but Edge Hill will be actually closed. Edge Hill will be closed completely, yes. And that will be starting the 11th or the next week? I, I forget what the dates, the proposed dates were for Edge Hill, uh, but I just uh, got word today and talked to the project manager that uh, definitely the 8th through the 10th, the Toyson Avenue will be in effect. Commissioner Klein. Al, or maybe Dennis. This is, how does any of this work correspond? Okay. How does any of this work, the PennDOT's doing on Edge Hill and Tyson, correspond with the overall work that we're doing? Is it? With the main project? Yes. It's supposed to come next year or whatever. Um, it's not, they're doing base repair from what I understand, Al, at night. Oh, okay. It's at night. Yeah, yeah I, I believe this is all going to be, you know, fixing potholes and, oh, okay. and, right. and repaving. Lateral oh, you said construction. I didn't know if there was something else involved, but I, no, that makes so sense. Basically, there's a lot of laterals that have to be repaired. Right. Won't okay. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to uh, clarify, because I've been talking with the, the state rep's office about this project. Um, the uh, the work on the in the Ward 9 area, Tyson, is going to be that repair work because originally they were just going to do it in conjunction with the project, but that's far enough off. You, you know how bad both of our sections of Tyson and Edge Hill are. Um, I just wanted to clarify, the, the no parking, um, my understanding was that this was going to be overnight work. You said 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Was that, that's not the other way around, right? It's not 5 p.m. to 7 no, as a matter of fact, I just talked to him about 20 minutes before I came here, and he told me 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay, and but, but the work, the, is the work itself... Now, the, the Edge Hill Road work may be overnight. I'm, I'm not positive with that, but Tyson Avenue, he specifically said 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay. So. All right, thank you, Al. Hey, the Chief's here. <laughs> My work is done. <laughs> Did, no, I think you have another question. <laughs> saying along that center strip there's no parking? That's correct. No 
one in Gorney Park's there anyhow. Yeah. Down the end. Yeah. Gorney Lee? Oh, that center. That's oh, in the center strip. Oh, yeah. yeah. Down yeah. there. Oh, Tyson, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's people parked there all the time. Yeah. The grassy one, but yeah. up further. Okay. Oh, up further where the, uh, okay. Yeah, up, up closer to Bradfield Road. Where the stone is at, up in that area. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Chief, do you have a report for us this evening? Madam Chairman, there's not too much to report that's uh, newer happening differently. We've been uh, attending ongoing meetings regarding the, um, the visit of the Pope in the fall, and I just mention that because it's apparently going to have a pretty significant impact on all the um, police departments in the county, and depending upon whether or not um, they use one of the train sites that, uh, here in Abington will make a big determination on how much of an impact it will have on us. The, um, I talked to you last time about the enormity of the, the size of this that they anticipate. And um, it's, um, if this is, as you know, they were initially talking about Noble Station. And uh, if you could just picture somewhere between Ten and 20,000 people coming to uh, that station and taking that down, as an example. It just gives you an idea of the enormity of just one, one site, and uh, that's what they're talking about. But it sounds like at this point that they may be looking at a different one along this line, which, of course, we would be just as happy if that happens. Um, but other than that, uh, Madam Chairman, the only other thing is the importance of our um, traffic safety blitz. Thank you. We just heard a report on that. Thank you for your report. Any questions for the chief? Okay. We're going to move on to our formal agenda then. I'm sorry. Pete, excuse oh, me. I do have one comment. I was just wondering uh, if maybe we should just remind everyone that Susquehanna at Washington Lane is closed. And I know we all sent out information, but people tend to maybe forget that that is closed there. I thought it would be a good time to mention that. It's and of course, on. they'll be milling your crew and working on it for, hmm, what did they say to us, a year, probably? <laughs> Just so we know. They're working hard to make all the roads nice. I just want to be clear, the Susquehanna is only closed at between 9 and 3. Okay. Yeah, it's open in the afternoon. And your crew? They you scheduled it to miss the rush hour periods. Rook Road is mm -hmm. a challenge to drive on. I was on it today. It's very bumpy. <laughs> But it is a good thing in the long run. Good thing. Yep. Okay, now we'll begin our formal agenda. PS1 is a motion to adopt ordinance number 2099, amending chapter 156, vehicles and traffic, article 3, parking regulations, section 25, parking prohibited at all times, no parking between signs, no parking here to corner, parking prohibited except certain hours, no stopping or standing, and Section 28, Special Purpose Parking Zones at the regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Commissioners on June 11, 2015, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments or questions from Commissioners? Commissioner Sanchez. Thank you. Commissioners, Commissioner Schreiber, I uh, just wanted to say a quick thank you on uh, the, the – Part of this motion affects the uh, section of Hart Road from Glen down to uh, 1931 Hart Road and wanted to say thank you to Officer Freed, Larry Mateo, and John Spiegelman who helped me coordinate a neighborhood meeting there uh, to try to remediate some of the issues from overflow parking at the Jericho Manor Apartments uh, right there on the border of Ward 7 and Ward 11. Very important. So, <laughs> yes, <laughs> lots of border conflict in that region. But <laughs> um, Now it's harmonious. <laughs> right. All peace has been restored. And uh, with this, uh, you know, I hope everybody would support it and we can uh, give the neighbors some uh, peace from people blocking their driveways and trash cans and the like and leaf Glad collection. Glad you didn't have to build a moat. No, that was, <laughs> we wanted to avoid that, so. Uh, there's Thank actually you. a partial moat there already. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Any you, Any other everyone. questions or comments from commissioners? Staff or audience? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. PS2 is a motion to advertise ordinance number uh, 3001, amending chapter 156, vehicles and traffic, article three, parking regulations, section 25, Parking prohibited at all times, no parking between signs, no parking here to corner, parking prohibited except certain hours, 
no stopping or standing, and Section 28, special purpose parking zones for adoption at the regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Commissioners on July 9th, 2015, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any questions or comments for commissioners? Yeah. Commissioner Bowman. Actually, just a brief question. Uh, Al, we used to do these just directing, you know, the stop sign on Cedar Road, get removed or something. Why did we change the format to this format now? Is that because of our new solicitor, perhaps? <laughs> that would be my answer, so he might be the better one to answer the question. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I can live with that. Sounds okay. like a board. <laughs> that's, that's fine. Okay, no other questions. Commissioner Myers, thank you. Um, just a general question, and Officer Free, this is probably for you. If you request a, a sign, no parking here to corner, does that have to be a specific distance or does it, do you take the, the actual corner into consideration? It has to be a minimum of 30 feet, which is required by law. Now under certain circumstances, we can extend that further if we need to. But in the majority of the cases, uh, 30 feet is adequate, so uh, we go by the, the Pennsylvania Vehicle Code in that case. So, for example, if there, if there was a driveway apron uh, right at the end of that 30 feet, you, you could extend it a little bit? Is that, I mean, would that be a circumstance you, where you could extend it? Yeah, that, that's correct. We, we would probably extend the no parking to the far side of the driveway apron so that uh, there, we didn't run the chance of somebody parking in front of somebody's driveway. Right. Okay. Thank you. Any other commissioner comments? Staff or audience? Name and address, please. Laura Lehman, 1431 Bryant Lane. On Monday, we had a solicitor in this our. This is not about PS2. This is on PS2. I'm sorry? Is this on PS2? Oh, no, I thought we were at the no, end. No, we didn't. Oh, we, we did didn't not vote yet. Yep, that's okay. <coughs> Any comments on PS2? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Are there any comments from the audience on the public safety matters? Jump that gun. Okay, Laura Lehman again. Um, on, on Monday, we had a solicitor in our neighborhood. Just as I happened to be coming home, he was dropped off at my neighbor's house, uh, one and a half houses down. And, and uh, as we were pulling in our driveway, we noticed that he was walking by all the houses that one might solicit. It had a clipboard, had a little tag on. And so uh, as he got on my property, I stopped him and asked what he was doing. He was soliciting, okay, but he was being dropped off. The car went somewhere else, and he was walking so as to be somewhere where nobody would see what car dropped him off. That already tells us something about what kind of solicitors we're dealing with. Um, Again, these incidents, um, and we had another solicitor recently that they called the police, and this solicitor was on the uh, street that had been hit many times um, on our, in our neighborhood, and so the neighbor that was out paid particular attention. Two hours later, she came out, and the same solicitor was on the same street. Okay, so we, we have some serious concerns. Um, I have asked previously, as you know, I asked last time if Chief Kelly might consider as head of the chiefs of police to rally the chiefs of police. The, the issue here is, uh, as I am told, possibly, that you cannot connect these solicitors to a particular crime. Therefore, you can't say it's unsafe. Um, but I think we know that certain behaviors, finding people in your backyard saying that they're measuring your lawn for lawn treatments or seeing brochures dropped in backyards or side yards, watching people look into windows of houses, all of that's been observed. <coughs> we know that the solicitor activity is making our neighborhoods less safe. And this young man who had no card and obviously no permit. Um, I had asked for his car that was with him to come back. They didn't. They took off. They skedaddled as fast as they could. We know that these are not people that are in our neighborhood just to do honest business. 
and we would like you, please, to work with us to do something to make us safer. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Any other comments from the audience? Name and address, please. Drew Rothman, 705 Carmet Road. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, as I was listening, I just figured I would bring up um, some neighbors I brought to my attention on the corners of Forest Avenue and Fox Chase Road as you approach Alvathorpe Park, uh, a lack of traffic uh, signalization. There is a push button there at the present time, but there's no walk or don't walk or manhand signals. Uh, I thought that uh, bringing that up before this committee might be appropriate and uh, just wanted to bring it to your attention. That's all. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Hearing no other comments, this meeting is adjourned. All right. It is my pleasure to call the June 3rd, 2015 Public Affairs Committee of the Township of Abington to order. Um, can we please start with a roll call? Commissioner Here. 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 Jones. Commissioners Farron and Jones are excused tonight. Thank Let us start you. with adoption of the minutes of the last meeting. This is a motion to approve the minutes of the May 6, 2015 Public Affairs Committee meeting, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any, uh, <coughs> any corrections? Commissioner Farron is the only guy who ever makes corrections. He's not present, so it doesn't sound like there are corrections. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 And the minutes are approved. Let us start today, as always, with our friend, Director Doug Wendell of the Parks and, Recs, uh, Parks and Recreation Department. How are things going? What is your report today? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, things are going uh, well. We're still moving ahead with all of our plans for the summer. We've just had our preseason meeting for all the employees for the pools. I know that my assistant, Andrew, did his already, so that's been done. Pools are moving forward, as you'll see in the first item here, that uh, everything else is moving right along and we're you know, hoping for a good summer, as always. And I believe, if I'm correct, June 20th is... June 20th is the first day the pool's open. First not, day the pool's not open. Not Memorial Day. Not it's ever. not, no. no not, it's not Memorial Day. Um, thank you very much, Director Wendell. <coughs> <coughs> Moving right along to our first item pertaining to the pools. Uh, PA1, this is reallocation of capital funding. This is a motion to approve the reallocation of $10,000 from uh, account 07-24-800-7531, uh, the Ardsley Center burn box repair, to uh, account 07-24-800-7535, the Crestmont Penbrin Pool Sand Blasting. Both accounts are capital accounts. Uh, the projected expenditure to complete this project will be a maximum of $10,000, and I so move. Been moved and seconded. Uh, do, you, do you have anything further to say on it? It's, it's pretty, pretty much uh, what it says here. The uh, the burn box repair for the Ardsley Community Center came in well under budget. There was about sixteen thousand dollars left in the uh, the capital, <coughs> and there were uh, there were more linear feet of crack repair that was necessary. It's just like repairing a roof. When you take a roof off, you have no idea what's underneath it until you actually removed it. And uh, these are forty-two year old pools, so. Uh, there was a lot of crack repair that was necessary, and it went over budget for us. But it's still, uh, it was all, it's already been done because it, we couldn't wait. Because as you know, it's only three weeks away. Both pools are 40, 42 years old. Yes. I'm older than the pools. It's really depressing. This will hold us up for another five, which means somewhere in the next three, Andrew will hopefully have the opportunity to do a pool renovation. So, so you have forewarned us. Yes. Um, any questions from the committee? Questions or comments? Questions or comments from the board in general? Staff? Our audience? Name and address, as always. Laura Lehman, 1431 Bryant Lane. The, um, the cost of the uh, uh, maintenance at uh, Ardsley Community Center is uh, uh, my question. Uh, do we have a, uh, an idea over the years what we do spend? Um, is Ardsley funded at all by the community itself? through individual fundraisers, or is it largely funded by the township? How is the, the, do we have a budget for Ardsley every year? 
I, I know Director Wendell is going to answer this. My guess, I might, might not guess, my understanding is that it is a township asset, Parks and Rec asset. Is that, I got that one right? Okay. Anything else you want to add to that? Or? Uh, well, I mean, the, town, the community center has been a, an asset. So when we are a lessee, the school district, as a matter of fact, the community center's lease is up this year. And we're in the process of discussing the, the lease extension with the school district. But it is a leased property that we've been leasing now since 1978, I believe. And uh, we've maintained it uh, with a budget that's provided by the township. And we've made improvements where, you know, the roof when it was needed, the air conditioning when it was needed, the windows when it was needed, whatever. Uh, there's a lot of maintenance that we've done on that building over the 30-some years. And uh, we, it generates revenue with the Ardsley Daycare Center and then the other activities that we have in there. And uh, that's the way it's been since 1978. So it's not, it's not funded by fundraising. Right. And for folks, for folks who don't know, the Ardsley Community Center is a decommissioned school. That's why it's a school district property. It used to be Ardsley Elementary School? Was yes, that? correct. Yeah. So. And so do we know th what amount we need to budget in the township for the lease and for the operation and maintenance? And, you know, minus what, whatever the income is? Is that It's published in the, uh, the budget every single year. D do you have an idea of what that figure is? Might, might I suggest that the speaker just send an, send an email or a request okay. to the uh, township you, manager? I can give you an exact amount. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank it's you. somewhere. I mean, we can, we'll, 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 we'll look that up. I'll look it up, I'll, too. I'll get the exact. Rather than guess at the actual number, okay. I'll get the number and I can email it. Thank you, Doug. Um, all right. I think we're... Uh, no further comments. We're ready to, uh, to vote. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? PA 1 passes. PA 2. This is uh, the Lubavitch of Abington lease extension for Alverthorpe Manor. This is a motion to approve one-year lease extension effective August 1st, 2015 uh, with the Lubavitch of Abington at Alverthorpe Manor at the rate of $17,047 annually, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Um, Doug, this is your domain. Any Comments on that? Uh, no, I, uh, they just, I thought they had a longer lease. I guess that they're trying to extend it just a little bit more. They, I guess they, they had assumed at one point when they first rented the building that they were going to go for maybe five years and then find their own property to move to. And I guess that's not happening. So uh, they're asking to extend it. They've been an excellent uh, uh, tenant for us. There's been no conflicts with any of the other tenants in them and vice versa. So it's been a, it's a, been a good experience. It's a nice place to headquarter. Um, Commissioner Luker. a lot of work in the yeah. building as well. President Luker. Yeah, I had a question. I thought it wasn't it originally a five-year lease? That's what I thought. Right. Lease agreement? That's what I believe it is. So now the five years is up, but instead of asking for five years or renegotiating a five-year lease, they want a window extension? Mr. Yeah. 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 Mr. Chairman, initially it was a one-year lease and provided for five one-year extensions. Oh, this will okay. be the third one-year extension as part of that initial lease. Gotcha. Thank you. All right. Um, Commissioner Schreiber. Is this the same amount as last year? I don't remember. It should be less. It's up, no, it's actually up slightly from last year. It's tied to the CPI for 2014. Um, I don't recall the exact number, but it's less than 2%, but it is a slight increase. Thank you. Uh, any other questions from the committee, the board in general, township staff, studio audience? Name and address, as always. Laura Lehman, 1431 Bryant Lane. So my concern when I, you know, when I look at the number of, of uh, $17,000 annually, something like $1,400 a month, um, and I assume that includes the heat, or we, we had the heat at $100 a month or something like that. Uh, when, when the heat for the unit, if I recall, was something like $60,000, their portion of it was something like $100, if I, if I recall correctly. Um, yeah, so we're, we're uh, you know, we're looking at something that, you, I mean, you can rent a single family house for $1,400 to rent a, a space for a church in a beautiful building like that with parking and, and so on. Um, seems like a pretty reasonable, good deal, a good deal. So, and my concern is that particular building and what kind of a deal that is because the art center also is in there on a good deal where they are making money, I think almost hand over fist, and as, as we talked about before, putting the little black brass plaques in the, in the pathway and expanding and adding and all of that. 
And when I looked at the documents for the Art Center, what concerned me was I saw an equity position due to the improvements that they'd made, among which was the stage, which of course is not an improvement unless you happen to be running a venue that needs a stage. Um, so my concern is the public gift of of our resources, our parks, our buildings, et cetera, to private entities, which in or the art center is an absolute treasure. Don't get me wrong. It's an absolute treasure. We're happy to have it. But some of the expenses and the way that I see them spending their money are less community oriented. And we went from the free concerts this year to paid concerts that will have beer a totally different idea than the community uh, gem that many people saw. And we had quite a bit of discussion behind the scenes uh, about that. And my concern is that we're allowing them to make money. We're not questioning the money. And then we may be giving away something if we're allowing them also to build up an equity position. So I would like to see if we have figures on that put out before we um, allow rents this low and uh, you know other people to use those facilities making a huge profit and you can see with the beautiful things they're doing that they are making a profit on it they keep moving up but the township is funding that and that shouldn't be once they make a profit they should carry their own weight and and go from there thank you Thank you for your comments. Yeah, I, I have a uh, yeah. May I ask a question? Hi. Probably, probably uh, this is from Manager Lefevre. After Settlement Music School left this, this area, did we have a list of people wanting to rent this particular section of the building? Um, are we turning anyone away? We are not. There was not a uh, line of interested tenants for that space. And when the uh, synagogue did take it over, they spent a considerable amount of money upgrading the facility. It, it had been um, somewhat deteriorated over a period of time. Uh, so they spent a, quite a bit of money upgrading the facility, and they continue to maintain it um, as, they, uh, as they lease it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Myers. Thank you, Manager Lefevre. Uh Commissioner Klein. I think it's also fair to say that when we discussed the lease, we also discussed the state of Favelthorpe Manor. And that this is not exactly an easy space to rent, nor is it an easy space to rent where we just start charging people net net rate leases where they have to pay utilities because nobody would ever lease it because the utilities in that building are inefficient. And, I mean, that's the township burden, not a leasee, so that's something we have to deal with. But to say that we would charge them heat or even the, the art center heat or I guess heat and air conditioning is ridiculous because it's an inefficient system. Nobody would ever rent that space if they had to pay that pay that fee. I mean, that's a burden the township has to deal with it, and I think we're Ed has a has a way of dealing with it, and we just have to implement that. So, and you know, the other thing is, as far as the art center is concerned, and both the synagogue. I mean, we've been through this, and I, I really hope that anybody watching this would call their commissioner or email their commissioner and understand the situation before they take what the speaker had said as us just giving stuff away. There are other circumstances that go, went into the decision for the board to make those decisions. Thank you, Commissioner Klein. Um, Director Wendell, I don't want to put you on the spot, but the folks, the Art Center was, was sort of brought up uh, peripherally to this discussion, and they're not here to defend themselves. I don't claim to be a expert on uh, on all their uh, all their figures and finances but uh, is it safe to say that the characterization of what they do as putting little plaques on things is not a fair characterization of the scope of of what they do for our township and moreover that that they are not in fact making money hand over fist is that is that fairly accurate I would say so I don't get to see their statements and to say that they're putting <coughs> plaques on things to make money is just a very simplistic statement they have um, outreach programs regularly. They're in a bit of a change uh, over now because uh, their executive director has uh, left the position and they have a temporary one there now and they're trying to work through 
a lot of issues that they have, and if they were making money hands over hand over fist, I think they'd be less inclined to do uh, to be as concerned about their their position as they are, and they they are very concerned because they're working very hard to get back to where they were and get back up to speed since they've lost two uh, executive directors. Right. And with regard to their concerts, their, their summer concert series, which is actually starting this month, um, my, correct me if I'm wrong, but my recollection is that uh, that was not a free, those were not free concerts last year, the year before. I, I seem to remember when I put it in my newsletter, there was some kind of charge, or am I, am I uh, off base the, on that? The township, the township and the art center began doing them together as a joint effort, right. uh, but there were a lot of costs. And as the budget became tighter and tighter for the township, we were, at, we were less able to contribute to the cost of the, the police, the, you know, the, the, the acts coming in, the, all the other little incidental things that you have to do. And so uh, the art center began to, to run them themselves. And I haven't uh, been over to one lately, but I don't remember them being charged for. They may, they may be asking for some donations, but I don't, I don't know that they're actually charging. I might be wrong about there, that. This year, there, there is a small hurt. Well, okay. Well, th I appreciate your correcting That's why they're bringing in vendors and right. things like that to try and make it as inexpensive as possible. And it does bring uh, – it's, it's twice as large as it was when it started. Uh, there's at least 1,000 people on certain nights. It's a, I mean, it's a fantastic a lot of people program. that don't normally there's go to the art center to the art center. Go win the circle you want. And to the bank. Right, well, thank you very much. Um, I, just, I believe it's a $5 fee. $5 fee. Uh, thank it's you very much. still pretty nominal. Quite a, quite a night of entertainment for $5. All right. Uh, with that, I think we can go ahead and vote. To all in favor of PA2? Aye. Aye. Opposed? PA2 passes. Item PA3. This is an amendment to the Clear Channel Outdoor Bus Shelter Agreement. This is a motion to delete three bus shelters on Old York Road immediately in front of Abington Hospital to southbound one northbound from the Clear Channel Agreement and allow Abington Hospital to erect, operate, and maintain bus shelters at these locations, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, Manager Lafitte, do you have? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Township and representatives of Clear Channel were approached by Abington Hospital about the feasibility of um, taking those three facilities from our agreement with Clear Channel and allowing the hospital to take control of those sites and replace the existing facilities with their own bus shelters. Uh, Clear Channel was receptive to the idea, um, and that's why it's before the board this evening. The proposal is contingent upon the hospital receiving grant funding uh, for the acquisition, and we do have with us uh, tonight Judith Kraka from the hospital, Director of Facilities Planning and Sustainability, who could provide more insight on the, uh, on the proposal. Well, then I would like to invite Judith Cracker to the uh, podium. Hello. Thank you. Nice uh, to see you all. Um, I passed out, or, or um, Manager Lefevre passed out. These are just concept drawings. What we're trying to do is we have many employees who use public transportation, and we have lots of members of the public who use public transportation. We're trying to sort of modernize these bus shelters, make them better lit, improve their seating. We're hoping to be able to use solar as an example, depending on the tree canopy. We're going to be looking at that on Friday. But the intent is to provide a better environment directly in front of the hospital and in front of Levy. The pictures that you have are really just concepts. It may not be exactly that once we select it, but that's the intent. We also hope to um, display messages about programs and health and wellness services that are offered. Uh, we certainly want to, um, advertise is the wrong word, but we certainly want to make available to the community information about programs and services that the hospital offers. We're just looking for your cooperation. We promise we will maintain them well. If we don't get the grant funds, we may not be able to do this, and so this is contingent upon that, but we're just looking for your support. Thank you very much. I looks like some folks have questions. Um, you know, we'll start with Commissioner Schreiber. She's on the committee. So if you do not get the grant funding, does it stay with Clear Channel? It will still be a bus shelter. It's oh, the bus shelters there. will not go away. The transition from Clear Channel to the hospital is really what's at risk here. So if we don't get the grant and we decide not to go forward, then Clear Channel said that they would continue to maintain them. And if it does go through, is Clear Channel interested in having, I can't believe I'm saying this, bus shelters anywhere else? Go ahead, everybody, say something. I, I thought that would be an issue. Uh, we did discuss that with Clear Channel, but apparently the, uh, the demand for advertising 
is not in line with their current inventory of bus shelters, so they're not interested in pursuing any additional locations. Okay, because I know I had talked to you about having one in on Eastern Road. and yeah. tried. Okay, thank you. We did try. All right. Um, President Luker. Uh, yes, question. Do these um, shelters have uh, trash receptacles currently? And if not, do you plan on having them? Because invariably, they always, there's always cans and rubbish laying around. That's these. a really good question, which I frankly can't answer, because we haven't, we're not into that level of detail yet. First, we need to have the funding. If trash receptacles are important, then we will make sure to have them. I mean, we have trash receptacles up and down Old York Road, and we have right. staff that change them daily. So I'm sure that we could come to accommodation on that. I mean, it's a reasonable question. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Sapone. Um, Mike, question for you. Right now we're generating revenue from the numerous uh, shelters that we had. So now we're taking three out of our agreement, which we're generating revenue, right? So now is the hospital going to pay us for that? Let, let me comment on that. A couple of things I just think are fair to say, and then I'll specifically address that. The hospital pays a very large payment in lieu of, as a not-for-profit, as you know, we don't pay taxes, but we certainly pay for services for which we are grateful, police, fire, etc. It's a, a substantial amount of money, and it is beyond what is the norm for payment in lieu of. So there's a very generous um, outlay there. The other thing is that the hospital in in a, 20, in 2014, provided over $70 million in what we call community benefit. It subsidized services to the community. It's to offset people who are underinsured or uninsured. It's for educational purposes to the community, screenings, etc. So there's a lot being done that I, I think is fair to, to put in a context. Um, I think the revenue implication is modest. Um, I believe it's somewhere in the order of $4,000. And if, if us making you whole on that is an important consideration for the township, then we will certainly make you whole. I would hope that everything else that we do, again, in the same context, would, would help offset that. But again, I'm not going to suggest to you that you should not be made whole if that's an important consideration. Okay. I can do this. Uh, Commissioner Klein. Um, I have two questions. Four thousand dollars is that a year for each one, or four thousand dollars total? Or that's the total for the three. Slightly less than four thousand dollars for the three shelters on an annual basis. On an annual basis. And then my other question was: you mentioned something about displaying services or anything. Is that just going to be static um, advertising, or are you actually looking at doing some kind of? Um, LED or well, the, these days, all of these shelters are moving towards the LED display. I mean, it certainly isn't going to be anything like what you see up and down Aldrich Road, including ours that announces the number of babies, etc. But I do believe that the information displayed would be digital and would likely be LED. I think it would be modest because the panels are small, but that's the intent. I mean, right now there's huge advertising. I mean, that's what Clear Channel, that's how they make their money, you know, and, and right. then return it to the township. So it certainly would be no no different than that and probably more tasteful than that. And then I guess my question, follow-up question B is how does, that hand, how does that get handled from an approval standpoint? I mean, we do have some provisions in the zoning ordinance, but it is in the right of way. It's not on a property. How do we handle that? I was just having a sidebar conversation with the solicitor on that issue, and we probably would need a separate agreement with the hospital if the board was supportive of the concept. <laughs> uh, but I think they would have to comply, obviously, with the zoning requirements, but also ensure the uh, proper maintenance of the facilities. So uh, we'd try to address both those issue in the right. the agreement with the the hospital. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, when we get into start start to get into LED signs, we talk we have to start talking about light levels, times, you know, how often it changes over a period of time. Um, because it is more so than, well, not more so, but the same as signs that we see on, the, for on shopping centers or anything like that. We don't want them distractions oh, no, no, to the drivers. So that's something that I, I, that's something I would want to see that's put fair. into the agreement with the hospital is how to regulate those. That's fair. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Klein. Uh, is, now, is that, something, uh, is that something we would need to add at this point or... I mean, it's not really, uh, no. I didn't think so. Can I have a question? Oh, Commissioner Gillespie, of course. Thank you. I'm, I'm just reading this, and it's, um, I read it before, but it says motion to delete three bus shelters immediately, and yet, Judith, you're not sure about the funding. So. No, it's contingent, and I thought that's how it was written, contingent upon our receiving the grant funding. 
Yes, that, that's that not is, in the yeah. phrasing. I think it's immediately in front of the house. Ah, oh, I didn't. Oh, no, immediately is the location. Because <laughs> right. they're right in front of before. Right, no, the intent is if we get grant funding. Commissioner Myers. Um, again, question for the manager of the fever. If, if we were to do this, and by deleting three um, of clear channels, bus, bus shelters, would we be able to relocate them? Because there are places, other places in the township that don't have bus shelters that could use them. And, and I know specifically on Fitzwater Town Road where I see people out in the rain and it, it's a perfect spot. So there are, there are locations, I would think, that we could still use them. We're absolutely aware of that. Uh, Commissioner Schreiber raised the same issue. She suggested some locations in her ward. We did approach representatives of Clear Channel with that suggestion, but apparently the demand for the advertising is not keeping pace with their current inventory. So at this point, they don't want to, they're not interested in adding any additional locations. They're not even interested in hearing or looking at uh, uh, no, locations we, they don't even know about? We, Mr. Mateo and I offered to drive them around to different locations to point out sites. At this point, they're not open to the idea. Wow. Yeah. Okay. How much does it cost? To, I'm sorry. How much does it cost to put a bus shelter in? Do we know? I don't know. On top of my head, I have no idea. Can we find out? Sure. It might be something to think about in the capital. True. Commissioner Sanchez. I'm shocked. Manager Lefevre. <laughs> Following up on that last item, Michael, the, uh, does the agreement call for the specific location of the bus shelters, though? Because if it, just to those points, if it doesn't call, you know, if it calls for, say, where we have 16 bus shelters, couldn't we just move it on our... No, the existing, uh, the existing agreement ex actually identifies 25 specific locations. So we'd amend the agreement if the board was uh, supportive of this and delete those three locations from the existing agreement and then develop a new agreement with the hospital for the, new, uh, for the three sites. Gotcha. In the current agreement, Clear Channel, uh, they, maintain, obviously, they maintain the bus shelters. Um, are any of them lit? I feel like, I know, I feel like I, I've seen some that... That are lit, but it, it could also be street lighting. I'm just actually, I believe the advertising is lit. That's the portion that's lit. Okay. Hmm. Uh, do they and do they pay anything for electricity on that? That's just sort of covered in what they. They're built directly by Pico for those. For the those just for okay. And the obligation, if there is Pico charges, the obligation would obviously transfer to us. Right. Although we're really hoping solar, in which case we don't have to just worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Put them in the right place. But Don't cut away too many on, trees. Depends on how many you. trees. That's the issue. We're looking it's a at forest that with, for the trees. We're looking with that with the engineers on Friday. Put wind turbines. The buses will keep the wind turbines. Oh, that, I like it. Uh, that, we, we, we could be somewhere with wind turbines. Um, any other questions from the board for Judith or on this uh, on this agenda item? Uh, any more questions, comments from township staff? From our audience, might want to might want to stay nearby, Judith, just in case. <laughs> Even Judith knows I was going to have something to say about this. <laughs> so obviously, first of all, uh, I I am completely opposed to more blinking, flashing neon signs. Um, the, although these snuck into our laws and have been allowed, um, they were really not approved by the, the majority of the residents who really didn't want this kind of thing. So that's number one. Number two, I'd just like to give another perspective on the in lieu of amounts because um, Abington Hospital is a giant business with arms and fingers everywhere. We're very grateful for all the services we have and to have a premier hospital nearby. There's no doubt about that. But the money, I mean, when you look at this, for instance, in order to provide advertising, they're going to get a grant out of whose pockets? I think these and some of yours and some of those. Okay? They're going to get a grant, this giant corporation. Okay? And it is a giant corporation. I think all of us know that the monies in medical care are top-heavy these days and the services are different. So the in lieu of grants are actually minuscule 
in terms of the kinds of favors, like changing our sign zoning and, and changing our clear channel panel, which requires lawyer services and everything else to write, con all of that, okay, requires a tremendous amount and getting grants out of our pockets. The in lieu of is actually minuscule in terms of that. Okay, and if they were paying anything in a fair share doing business, it would be humongous by comparison. So I, I don't think we should let that sway us. And um, while the bus shelters are a good idea, I would like you to vote no on the neon signs and not allow our zoning laws to be changed in a sort of a spot zoning manner for everybody who comes along. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Well. With no other comments or questions, I think we're ready to vote on PA3. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? PA3 passes. Moving right along to page two. Item PA4. This is the Pennsylvania Child Protection Services Law Funding. This is a motion to authorize the expenditure of up to a maximum of $15,000 from the contingency account to cover the costs associated with processing the child abuse clearances and criminal record checks of township employees and volunteers as mandated by the amended Pennsylvania Child Protection Services Law, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Um, Manager Lefevre, you want to speak? Thank to you, me? Mr. Chairman. In the uh, latter part of 2014, the state legislature passed a series of bills amending the Pennsylvania Child Protection Laws requiring um, additional reporting requirements as well as clearance checks and criminal background checks for both employees and volunteers uh, for local government. Uh, we're waiting for the Department of uh, Public Welfare to release guidelines on exactly who has to be checked. Well, we've, uh, these, these checks have to be completed by the end of this year. There's three checks that have to be done. Um, we're estimating, depending on the number of employees, anywhere from eleven dollars to $15,000 in cost. And that cost will be good for three years, but this process had to be repeated in 2018, which we would obviously budget for at that time. Uh, this kind of caught us by surprise. We didn't come aware of it until the beginning of this year, so it wasn't included in the 2015 budget. Thank you very much, Manager Lefevre. I know this is something that uh, I know about very well due to involvement with the Highland PTO. I know Commissioner Kalinowski, we all had to do uh, background checks for the 24-hour relay. Um, I know Commissioner Klein has a question or comment. So, Mike, we're going to, so going forward, we're going to have to allocate these funds each year? Every three years. Every three years. I'm sorry, you did say that. And then it says, on, it says in the motion, volunteers. How are we going to determine who's a volunteer that gets paid by the township? We've actually done an inventory for each department. We're basically looking at uh, parks employees, library employees, um, PAL volunteers. Um, it's quite extensive if you look at the, the entire inventory of, of services provided to the township. And these are people that come in regular contact with children on a routine basis. Um, it's not real specific to the law so far. That's why we're waiting for further guidance. But we'll work through the solicitor's office and make sure we err on the side of caution and, if anything, um, make sure Everyone has the proper clearances, so we're in full compliance. Well, I mean, you mentioned, I mean, I guess the, I do have questions about volunteers and how that, what the guidelines are for the township for actually picking up the cost and doing it. I mean, you know, they are volunteers. But you talked about PAL. I mean, PAL has its own funding. Um, should we be picking up that? I guess the question would be for the 24-hour relay is capped. You know, should we be picking up the volunteers for that? What, you know, I mean, I think we need to realize, we think we need to have a better understanding of where the volunteer cost gets borne by the township or borne by the organizations that the volunteers are actually working for. So I would be, I would be curious to see how that is going to get determined. That's a valid distinction. We need to flesh that out a little further. So, um, going further for employees, I think as part of the requirement for a new employee coming on board, we require them to have those clearances before they are sure. hired. Uh, but I think you're correct in terms of volunteers. It would be appropriate for the township to assume that cost. I mean, like you have the community policing volunteers. So I think you have volunteers for the fire companies. Exactly. You know, that I can understand. They're serving. But I, I think you need to, we need to find where that line gets drawn with some of the organizations that are associated with the township but not actually you, – you I think you understand what I'm talking about. Exactly. And I'm not trying to be nitpicky. I just, you know, we can – if you cross over the line for one, you you end up going down the line for a lot exactly. of others. So. Well, just Thank you. I, if I may. Um, okay. I know, yeah, uh, I'll get to everybody. Commissioner Sanchez? But on that point, I mean, it's not so much that it's maybe bad to fund that in any way, but you have to be careful because the organization's getting a contribution and you have to be, for their own sake, 
the federal income tax treatment and the uh, their tax exempt status, is, you know, needs to be kept in the right buckets. So they may be at risk for some kind of I contribution think we, like I that. I think we'll be able to use Commissioner Sanchez as a resource as we pursue this further. <laughs> <laughs> I want a background check, though. Oh, Commissioner Kalinowski. <laughs> so um, we learned a lot through the 24-hour relay and the challenges we had to go through even to get. We made all our volunteers have their own background checks. We did offer to reimburse them. No one asked for a reimbursement. But I guess my biggest concern is this law has probably changed three times since January. This law has either asked you for $45, asked you for $30, and now asking you for $10. And then it, now it's back to employees or volunteers. I, I guess what I would, my only concern would, I would believe all the township employees should be reimbursed. The volunteers, like you said, should be only the firemen, the um, the library and things in that of that nature that are more linked to the township than not linked to a volunteer program that CAP offers or PAL offers. I mean, I don't know how many PAL volunteers there are. Peggy might know that, or how would that work? Well, this this would only apply to the volunteers that work with the ch with children. Children, sure. I mean, yeah. we have many volunteers, and many of them don't see even see, really actually see the children. They're help us with mailings and help us at the food festival. Um, can, coincidentally, we at PAL were d discussing this today. We've, we've always required the um, criminal check and the child clearance check. Uh, the, new one, the new one is the, the FBI thing, um, and that's $45, which obviously is sizable to, to anyone. But we were also, we just heard this, and maybe this listener can help, that, that you might be, one might be exempt from that if they've lived in the township for nine years. Is that, does that? If you've been a Pennsylvania resident for 10 or more years, okay. you don't have to get the FBI background check. Okay, and that's. You still that's, have to do the other right. two. Right. This is something that, sorry, but this is something that just came up recently to change it again that if you lived in, as a residence for nine years. It, it wasn't something that they started with in January and said, we're going to do this, this, and that, and that. It's something that now they're creating as they go. So the, the law is supposed to go in effect in July, correct? Right. Of this year. And so to have that done, I, I, I think you have to allocate the money to the expense for the can employees. I, can I follow up on something? Uh, uh, yes, and then Commissioner Schreiber. But do you mind if I just uh, – I, I, I have no preconceived ideas as to whether we should include yeah. volunteers related to CAP, PAL, or whatever other organization. I just think we should understand that if we are, where that boundary – how far out that boundary goes and what the cost is to the township, and Absolutely. then the board should be able to make an educated, dis educated decision or an informed decision. I, I don't have a preconceived idea one way, or one way or another, but I think we don't have enough information to understand where that expands and how that affects the numbers. So. It's funny we're sitting yeah, here. I was, sorry. Okay. I was going to say, it's funny we're sitting here talking about that. Because every relay meeting we had, it wound up being up to a 40 minute conversation mm -hmm. just on these child checks. Mm -hmm. And I talked to Commissioner yes, Shriver. Who because I, I just completed mine today, uh, turned them in for Penn State. So, um, two things I wanted to say. First of all, like we just heard, the laws are not only keep changing, but the directions. So after I completed mine, I had to recomplete them, as did many employees at Penn State, because we hadn't gotten the correct thing, so we had to pay twice. So you have to make sure that the directions are really clear of what they're doing. When you, you know, if, if you're going to tell an employee that this is what you have to do, make sure the directions and they're not going to change on them, because there was two different certifications that had to come out, and I had to redo one of them, and it, I mean, it only cost me another $10, but there it was. The other thing is, um, I know as far as Penn State, which could be certainly different than PAL, but secretaries that don't see the students had to get their checks too. So I don't know if that is just people that are coming in contact with children. I, I guess there's the chance that they may, so. We've, I can just say, we've just been beginning to have this conversation with the, the Highland PTO, and it is very, it is very confusing. I know, you know, for instance, uh, my background check for PTO and, all, and simultaneously for a 24-hour relay, you know, just paid for everything. You know, was much cheaper being having been a township resident for a long time. But uh, it, it is very confusing. It seems to me um, that 
it's a it was a, certainly a well-intentioned law, obviously, mm-hmm. common sense, people working extensively with children. But uh, it ends up being kind of a big, amorphous, unfunded mandate because the guidelines aren't clear. I remember under the old guidelines, uh, there was a very specific number of hours a week. If you worked a certain number of hours a week, I think it was 10 or something, uh, with children, if you volunteered, then you had to get a background check or it was it was strongly suggested that you get a background check. But now it's it's very... Mm-hmm. Loose and, and as you said, the goalposts keep changing. That's a good question. Also, if uh, somebody is coming to and ha- has already gotten them from another employer within those three years, is that valid, or do they have to redo it for the township? If, if they have, if they already have an existing background check and an existing it's child abuse one. clearance, then they're fine. And I did have to get the, uh, even though I have lived here more than nine years, I had to get the um, fingerprint one. Mm-hmm. So. I can't even remember what I had to get. Uh, Chief, do you have a, a comment on this? Yes, it's continuing to evolve, obviously. And um, I'm meeting with several of my colleagues from around Montgomery County, and I'm meeting with the DA tomorrow, actually, to discuss a couple of these finer points to see if we can't get it uh, honed down a little bit further. So I don't think that there's anybody that's going to have the absolute answer here um, yet tonight, but we'll continue to work on it. And uh, with the help of the state and the help of um, the RDA and uh, our solicitor, we hope to get it uh, nailed down as soon as we can. And uh, I can tell you, speaking for um, the, the PAL organization, and we haven't dinged the township for any of the costs of any of the things that we've done, so we're certainly not going to be talking about doing that um, for the, this uh, cost of operating either. Thank you, Chief. Um, any other questions or comments from the board? Township staff? Audience? Name and address, as always. A uh, name and address and your background check papers, please. <laughs> You're all right here, and I have brought my witness with me. Um, Laura Lehman, Meadowbrook. And I just wanted to know the $15,000 would then go to what? If everybody is, um, for instance, I think Chief Kelly just said you wouldn't be charged for I, guess, I assume he means maybe PAL or police volunteers or whatever. So for what is the 15000 for? Are we paying for the individual checks or are we paying for the... Measures, is that something you can answer now? There are actually three checks. The, uh, the first one is the uh, criminal history report from the Pennsylvania State Police. Our insurance trust is actually picking up that $10 cost for all our volunteers and employees, and they'll process them for us. So that cost is being absorbed by our, our DIBIT, the insurance trust. The uh, second one is the child abuse history clearance from the Pennsylvania Department of Human Services. That's $10 each. And the third one is the FBI fingerprint uh, check. And the price we have for the FBI is $28 per individual, not the 45 wow. So we're getting a better deal evidently, than, than some other people. So basically you're looking at $38 per individual. It's just a question of how many people have to have the FBI versus signing the affidavit for a uh, resident of 10 years, uh, attesting that they don't have a criminal history or, or any, any problem in that area. Right. And one of them, I, I don't even remember. One of them, I, honestly, there were so many things to fill out. Uh, one of them was the one that where you have to detail every address that you've held for the last, that's like, that, that's, the, that's the state, that's the, is that the state child abuse one? Yes. It is. Uh, okay. It is. Yeah. I filled it out. I, I don't even remember is. what I was filling out. Yeah. But there were so many of them. Okay. So this was um, for the, the costs that we have for the actual applications, not for education or... or no, this is the actual fee the actual associated fee. with okay. the... The checks with so each individual person's check. Then I think, as as was mentioned, the, the the problem is the scope of this and how many organizations are included and not included and and so on. So it would seem to me that uh, somewhere you need to make it just for the township and the organizations are all on their own for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Any other questions, comments? Uh, hearing none. Let's vote on PA four. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? PA4 passes. And our final item of the night is PA5, Economic Development Pennsylvania Local Share Account Grant. This is a motion to adopt resolution number 15-022, approving Abington Township to submit an application to the Department of Community and Economic Development, the DCED, 
for the Pennsylvania local share account grant in the amount not to exceed $142,500 to be used to acquire 1100 and 1102 Old York Road, and I so move. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Um, uh, Assistant Manager Waymar, do you want to? I'll let you. I'll let you try it first, and I'll just back it randomly. You don't want to start? I, I, mean, I think I'm going to let you start. I think I'm going to let you start. This is for the northwest corner of Old York Road, the 1100 and 1102. Um, this is going back. There's definitely some history there at that intersection. And in order for us to do anything for the alignment of that intersection to help with the traffic and, and a possible turn arrow to get onto uh, from Susquehanna northbound onto Old York Road, that's the, the first piece of, of the puzzle is to do something about that corner property. And we've just recently learned that there is a, a guardian that's uh, in charge of the owner of that property, and she is looking to sell as soon as possible. So we see this as an opportunity to move forward with this. That was a, a very good statement. Uh, you know, I'm going to let Commissioner Klein make his. Uh, Can we uh, have, have we negotiated any? I know we want to be careful, but have we negotiated any cost on the land with them? Have we discussed any numbers? We we have not. We did do an appraisal, and that's where we got the hundred ninety thousand dollar amount from. And we you know we saw that, and that was pretty yeah. fair. We decided. And the sh per the share the terms of share grants. Uh, it's a percentage with 75 percent. And for folks who don't know, the share grants are the grants that come from uh, casino revenues in Pennsylvania. And then what would happen? What would happen if we got the money and bought the property? What's the plan? Well, the the plan would be to next step would be to apply for a multimodal grant, which would be next month in July. That is due. Um, so that that plan, we're getting a traffic engineer to work on some counts for that intersection as well. So ultimately, if we could tear down the, those two buildings to help with that intersection, that's the ultimate goal. But have we looked at, I mean, it's my understanding, because we discussed this all the way back in the old Yorker Carter study, mm -hmm. that you'd actually have to take the intersection back. You'd have to acquire land back further in order and to make the, the actual turn to align the. Right, you're, you're correct, and that is what's, what's written in the study. Um, and that's part of what the traffic engineer is detailing for us now to see how far back we would need to go. But right now, just with <coughs> these two properties, you know, finding out that they're going to be for sale, it's our opportunity to get the property. Right. And how's, and how's the traffic engineer's money, how's, how's that being paid? That'll be through uh, the, the grant or sooner than that, probably contingency. Okay. It's not, it's not that much. It, it's and it's nothing that we we we're still waiting on a proposal, so we haven't. Oh, I haven't. No, I'm sorry, you no. made it sound like they were actually doing no, something. No, not yet. No. Okay, I misunderstood. Yeah, yeah. This is. Um, oh, if I can, if I may, mm -hmm. as uh, I guess as some folks know. So this northwest corner, the entire west side of this intersection is in Ward Eleven. This is a property that I'm very familiar with, and the first everyone knows Old York and Susquehanna is universally acclaimed as the worst intersection of the township. Um, the most accidents, the most near misses, the most everything. Um, and there, you know, you don't even have to be a traffic engineer to, to tell this logically. A big part of the problem there is it is grossly misaligned. Um, visibility is terrible because the northwest corner juts out into the middle of the, of what's supposed to be the intersection. And so you, people can't properly see people coming, coming along. There's a reason it's one of the red light camera intersections to say the least. Uh, the first step to eventually getting something done uh, at this corner to properly, you know, to properly align it and, frankly, also uh, to make it a far more appealing location for, for some proper development is uh, acquiring these properties. And for, for the first time in more than a generation, uh, these two properties, 1100 and 1102, look like they might be coming up for sale. So that's, that's the whole reason for moving on this, uh, moving forward on this right now. Um, so that's my comment. Uh, Commissioner Sharper? Yeah, I have two questions. And yes, I know we've looked at trying to acquire them for quite a long time, but um, did I understand you to say that there was, uh, that we needed to provide matching? Did I, when you were saying about the 75 percent, was that, so were we providing? 25 percent, correct. So what is the number that we would have to match that at? It would be 40, 47,500. And that would be coming out of? Depending on how quickly the grant would turn around, either contingency or fund balance. 
And um, you mentioned that then we would have to get a second grant. If we do, if we got the first grant but not the second, what happens to the properties? Well, I, nothing would happen to the properties. We, we would just continue to, to to work towards other grants and getting getting the project. You know, the the project has so many pieces to it. You know, the the corner property, the the road, the alignment, everything. So, um, it would be the ultimate goal to find the grant money. Okay, so we can't move forward. Um, the the property would stay the way it is right now. Right, and this Except this local share share grant, um, it's it's only up to two hundred thousand dollars. So that's why we we found this to be a, a good opportunity to purchase the property with this grant money. It's a, it's a good, especially for the immediate. Uh, you know, again, I can't stress this enough. Once in at least one generation availability, it's. Uh, it's the best. It's the best and most immediate. What's the fit. second grant again called? Multimodal. That's the Penn dot multimodal grant. Um, has, uh, Commissioner Klein, I, I know you. I, I, I know you had meetings with Montgomery County Planning Commission and mm -hmm. with all you know. With full disclosure, I'm the chair of the County Planning Commission, so I should say that. But has anybody started to do any test fits or anything with the? I mean, because I know we're talking about these two properties on the corner, but in order to achieve what is set out to achieve for that corner, we need to understand how many properties we're talking about, what happens to them after we after we after we acquire them. I mean, this is land assemblage. It's not exactly, you know, it's not an easy task. Especially, it could be a long-term thing, also depending on how how quickly property comes up, and then. <clears throat> I mean, many people could figure this out, but the last person that has the last piece of the puzzle is the most difficult person to deal with, mm -hmm. um, and whoever that may be. So, I, I mean, is there a – I guess I would want to know – I understand the, the significance of getting these two pieces of property, but I kind of want to understand the overall scheme. And then the other thing is, and before Chief Kelly leaves, I would want to – Make sure that we get a contingency in there to get rid of the red light camera if we get these properties. <laughs> <laughs> That's only a joke. <laughs> we've, we've actually gone out and spoken to the, the different property owners and business owners in that intersection. Um, and everyone is, is open to, to conversation. We've spoken to engineering to find out if, if we did just want to knock down the two properties, if that would be possible versus knocking down any additional properties. So all of those conversations, and as you said, we have been in touch with Montgomery County Planning Commission. We had a meeting, um, in-house meeting with the Planning Commission and with PennDOT to get all the players at the table together to move forward, yeah. Yeah, and that, these are conversations that are ongoing. Um, and yeah, and, and engineering engineering did say at least preliminarily it would physically be possible to knock down those properties without knocking down others. Although I don't know ultimately that that would be a very you know wise use of funds because realistically we probably can't do anything. And we'll know this from the from the uh, traffic oh, study. I, would tell, I mean, I would tell you for engineering wise you could do that. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm actually more concerned about the overall scope of what has to be acquired, what's going to happen to it once mm -hmm. it is acquired. What does it do for taxable income? Because we're going to now I mean, take away certain properties, and how is that going to? Then what are we selling back out after we have these properties? I guess there are a whole lot of questions. I mean, that's I didn't know if there was those. I should be speaking. I didn't know if there were those plans in mind, and if there's been any of that investigation done. It's it is absolutely ongoing. This is, these are all believe me. These are all things of which we are. Painfully cognizant. Last, last question: How quickly will we hear about this share grant? Um, I don't know how quickly the, the turnaround. We did. Uh, we were recipients of a share grant last year, and it was within a few months that, that it was turned around. So, okay. thank you. What's the deadline date on the June thirtieth? Um, any other, uh, Commissioner Myers? Um, a question, Tara. If if we weren't using the share grant for this purpose, which is a very good one. Can that can that grant be used for any kind of bricks or bricks or mortar building? Uh, according to the, there are specific guidelines, with, which are not in front of me right now, but I do not believe so. No. No. Okay. And one other thing, more Sorry. from Commissioner Klein, Under, please. In, in case you didn't know, because I dealt with this before, it is actually in our community planning agreement with Montgomery County Planning Commission to actually assist the township in writing grants for these type of things. So. Great. Thank should, you. We have a it's, county planner, so we should actually look mm -hmm. into that. It's and that's much appreciated. Um, 
Any other questions from the board? Uh, township staff? Uh, audience? Name and address for the record. I don't know who you are, but. Donald Brewer, okay. Whoops. 1644 Arnold Avenue. Um, thank you all for your service, first of all. Um, the reason I got up to speak on this economic development portion of the meeting is because I'm hearing about the township requesting a shared grant and then a second grant. What was their second grant name? Multi what? multi -mold. That's a PennDOT grant pertaining to uh, tra in, um, basically improving an area uh, with regard to multiple modes so of transportation. So that's PennDOT. Like car, you know, car and bike and train and walking, et cetera. Gotcha. Um, I'm listening to the township request grants to tear down buildings and it was brought to my attention that last month at this meeting, um, the subject came up about putting up a building, a uh, PAL building in the Crestmont section of Willow Grove. And, and as much as I support PAL, I'm wearing my 18-year-old son's jersey. He won't be able to use PAL. Uh, and in two months, he's about to go to college at the end of this month. But in two months, he won't be able to benefit from power when he come home to visit, if the building was there. Mr. Chairman, I think that we're trying to in our to community, the agenda. I'm, I, I'm on this. I'm, I'm on this topic, if you don't mind. It's, uh, it's all right. I know, I know some folks are going to speak. That's, if no, you speak I, no this I'm now, on this topic right now for three minutes, if you don't mind. Um, I'm hearing about the local share account grant. I'm hearing about, um, you know, open space grant. I'm hearing about the second grant. I'm hearing about all these grants. But this board heard testimony last month um, stating that uh, our community was in favor of a PAL center and no one bothered to share anything about any grant opportunities with anybody in the community. That's first. And secondly, the testimony that you heard was, mis was, was, was very misleading, very misleading. So I'm requesting that you don't spend this type of money to knock down buildings <coughs> when there is a greater cause in our township to help our people, particularly black people, um, who need a building put up, and I will speak at the appropriate time on that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brewer. Um, if there are no other, uh, oh, <coughs> it's a name and address as always. Laura Lehman, 1431 Bryant Lane. So, so the question is the Pennsylvania Share Grant, and uh, you know what came up last month was the PAL Center. And it was presented that the community, although they wanted a community center, was unable to, I can hear myself in there, it was unable to uh, find a way to fund it, whereas PAL was able to fund theirs, and so they wanted to go ahead. This community has for 40 years been trying to get a community center with virtually no help from the Ms. township. In, well, it, what's Ms. important here is the Pennsylvania Share Grant and how we're using it. So you need to know where I would like it to go as opposed to where you're proposing it to go. So, and I did speak to Commissioner Luker uh, the other night and said, D you know, were you able to find out about the Pennsylvania Share Grant? And would it be appropriate for a community center in the Willow Grove community? Uh, where the PAL Center is being presented. You're going to hear more about that later, but the, it, it, this has to do with your vote to go ahead with that Pennsylvania share grant when this share grant, if it applies, and we were hoping we would know by tonight, if it applies, might be one of the only opportunities for this center 
to get a good chunk of money for the start of this project. They would, of course, need more funds as they went. So this is a very important grant for this community. And as Commissioner Klein brought up, there are many pieces coming together with this other one, including the fact that you might not even succeed in the sale. Okay, so um, we'd like to know whether you would consider the, instead of approving this that you are about to approve, to put that on hold until we can see if it is appropriate. I don't know if Commissioner Luker has found out since I asked him, but to see if it's appropriate for that community center, in which case please vote no and consider using this share grant for the community center. Thank you for your comments. I know, I know that there, there are folks here, you know, who are who are interested in speaking on the 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 topic of a you know of of the you know of of the PAL center that was as hypothetical PAL center that was discussed last time. Um, before we veer to up, this is I want to make this clear. This is an apples and oranges kind of thing. Um, share grants, uh, Ms. Waymar, correct me if I'm wrong, but share grants are. Available on a on sort of an, a rolling basis with their own. There aren't. There isn't one share grant to apply for and then never again. Am I am I correct about that? Correct. And also, Ms. Gallagher does have the the guidelines here, and and it states that it's you can use it for revitalization, but not for new construction. So it would not be eligible for a new community right. center. Thank you very much for that. Um, all right, uh, President Luker. Uh, if, if I might, uh, Mr. Struthers, who's our um, Director of Community Development, could possibly elaborate on what Ms. Wehrmeyer just uh, alluded to on the shared grant and answer Mrs. Lehman's question. Mr. Struthers? Yes. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Luker and Mr. Chairman and members of the, the board. Uh, last year we submitted an application for the share grant and we had an application for both the Crestmont train station and the Noble train station. Uh, the staff at the Department of Community and Economic Development at the state level said we had to take out the Crestmont train station because there was no economic um, uh, component to it. So uh, the underground, the underlying uh, driving force or criteria is that it has to have an economic development component to it. So doing a building for social good or recreation is not an applicable um, uh, use for, for the grant. So it would not be able to use for a recreational f facility. Thank you, Director Strada. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Gillespie. Yeah, I just have one question. Is there a time limit that you have to use this grant within a certain, you know, like six months, a year? Yes, it's, it's, it's a That's three-year right. calendar. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and as I said, I know, I know that uh, there are folks who are going to want to speak about this. Um, if I can recommend that we really focus, I, again, I know folks are interested in talking about the, the whole PAL Center issue. Um, if this is a, a separate topic, so I would recommend that folks, you know, focus, focus their comments maybe, maybe towards later, towards the general comments, uh, as opposed towards this per se, unless, unless this really has to do with PA5 specifically, maybe then we can all be focused on the other topic later. Yes, my name is Louise Twyman. I live at 1672 Franklin Avenue. And um, my concern is that I have been before the entire board requesting money for our community. And I'm very new at this, and I never realized that there was so much grant money coming in to Abington Township. And I do not want to speak specifically for PAL or the community center right now. I would just like to say that I've always been told that there was no money to do anything that we've requested. And now I'm learning that there is money going everywhere. So that is my point. And I will speak later about the community center versus the PAL center for Crestmont the Crestmont community. Thank, thank, thank you, Mrs. Twyman. Um, again, I know we're going to be speaking, or at least <coughs> hearing about this, this topic later. Um, any more comments specifically regarding PA5? Uh, before we vote, I just want to say, Ms. Waymeyer, I know I kind of punted this to you, uh, and thank you very much for handling the explanation. It was far more succinct and eloquent than I probably would have presented, so thank you very much. Um, we are now going to vote on PA5. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
PA5 passes. All right. And now, at long last, we'll entertain, uh, that is our formal agenda, so now we'll entertain uh, general public affairs related topics from our audience. Hi. I'm um, Donna Brewer, 1644 Arnold Avenue, Willow Grove. It was brought to my attention that um, last month at this very meeting, you had folks come and testify regarding um, uh, a, a desire for Powell Center in Crestmont Park. And, and as much as we have nothing against Powell, in fact, I like the work that they do, I favor Powell, but with regards to this particular space, Crestmont Park, our last pretty much open space to have any type of community center, the residents are requesting a community center and not a Powell Center, um, which is the exact opposite of what you were told last week. Um, this issue has been going on for over 40 years. Uh, there used to have, be a school there, Park School, and long story short, the school district sold it, and they sold it to developers to develop homes. At that time, the commissioner dropped the ball. Okay, at that time, there should have been something put in place to replace the community center, and it was not. Since then, uh, the local people really have nowhere to meet our children of all ages, I'm talking infants, middle age, young adults, 20, 21, graduate high school, don't have anywhere to conjugate. Most of our streets and our ward does not even have sidewalks. So literally they're conjugating on the streets. And this is what motivated me to get involved in public service, is when I began to see the disenfranchisement of our people. Um, and we've been asking for a community center for a while now. Now, in 2006, 2007, when this topic first came up, we were told that there was no money. At that time, there was over $10 million in Abington Township's unrestricted fund. In 2013, when we revisited this topic, when the PAL issue came up and we began having meetings with Chief Kelly and PAL, at that time there was over $15 million in the township's unrestricted fund. In addition to that, no one, by the way, told us that we can try to help you with a community center that can help take care of everyone in the community with possibly a share grant or HUD grant or open space grant like we like they did for the, um, the Grove property. They got an open space grant. And now I'm hear hearing about a contingency account. And it seemed like uh, the longer I sat here, um, I'm hearing $10,000 going to Arsley Community Center, $17,000 annually going to Alvathorpe. Ms. Burr, I'm, I apologize for interrupting. You're, you're a little past the three-minute mark. If you could. Oh, did I? Uh, I yeah, I don't. Wow, that went quick. Point being is, thank you, point being is um, we have a very need, a very real need for a community center, and we have uh, collected over 250 signatures so far requesting the community center. I just want you to note that most of those people were from the streets right around Crestmont Park, and the second thing is you received a letter from United Neighbors we're saying that we want a Powell Center, but there's three people from United Neighbors here today to say that that's not accurate. The person that testified to that was not honest. Uh, Ms. Burrow, did, did you, if you have the list of the petition, do you, have you given that to the manager? Excuse me? You said there Excuse was, me? You said there was a petition? Or you Petitions, have, have yes. Have you given that to the manager? I'd be more than happy to. Yeah. Not tonight. We asked to have this put on the... Um, agenda for tonight. We asked to have it put on the agenda for the full board meeting on the 11th. We're still circulating petitions. There are seven people circulating petitions in the community. This is not one or two people's desire. So we have to collect all of the signatures and put them all together. I'll be more than happy to give them to the manager. Is that what you'd like me to do? Well, usually when 
somebody brings a petition, we the manager distributes it to the board. So, okay. That way we all get a, a gotcha. copy of what Commissioner Klein's trying to say. I'll be more than happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Burton. I know some other folks uh, want to speak. Before, just to, you know, for folks who didn't see, you know, didn't see last month's meeting, um, the issue of the, of the PAL Center, in as much as it came before the board, um, was about as preliminary as you can, as you can probably get. And I think, I, you know, Commissioner Myers wants to pipe in and correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, really all it was was uh, giving, giving PAL the okay to go forward with, with fundraising. There is no, there is no specific fund, uh, land development plan or, arch or architecture for any building. There is so much and so far in the future that would have to come before the board. So I just want to make sure people understand that. Obviously, mm -hmm. anyone who you know, wants to speak is free to speak. But um, mm -hmm. is that, I mean, Commissioner Myers, is that a fair assessment of how in extremely preliminary this whole notion is? Oh, absolutely. The, the board approved a concept. concept. That's and I think a couple of the most important points that need to be made is Pal did not ask the township for any money whatsoever and made it quite clear that we couldn't even go ahead with fundraising without the concept of the building. We're probably years away from this. This would be a huge capital uh, campaign that Powell would put on. And I'm interested to hear about the grants that you're talking about, because in all of the homework that we've done, we have not found one grant for bricks and mortar. Really, we haven't. We've had discussions with Josh Shapiro himself, county commissioner. Um, we've talked to the state office, Madeline Dean, and there are no grants that we know of for bricks and mortar. And, and not, not only that, part of the resolution that we passed, or whatever you want to call what we did last month, was it included to have the community's input going forward. I mean, I think John's right and Peggy. I mean, it was very preliminary, and we anticipated the community being involved in the conversation, but we're just not at that point yet. And moreover, just, and again, I, I know this is time you want to speak, some other folks that want to speak, just for the record, um, since there really isn't anything before the board with, with regard to this, it was really just that, oh, that notion of the concept. Um, I think it's safe to say that the folks from PAL, and I don't want to speak for Director Strother, but I, I think they're all available and willing to have a, a, a conversation mm -hmm. and, you know, with regard to any, you know, you know, potential misunderstandings uh, about about community intent or anything else. I think that's a conversation that's that could definitely happen. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe even you know tonight, if, if folks want to talk af afterwards tonight. I'll be um, very but, brief. Oh, please. My name is Louise E. Twyman. I live at sixteen seventy two Franklin Avenue, Willow Grove, Pennsylvania, and it makes me sick to my stomach to know that our commissioner of Ward 5 and the community developer. They all live in Ward 5 and they've completely ignored our plea for what we need. And I think it's so very unfair. It just makes me sick. We've been calling and crying for 30 and 40 years. Please help us. Show us how to, to raise money because this is what we want. If I, if I did not receive any kind of correspondence from you, Mr. Spiegelman, I would not even know what was going on. I was hospitalized last month and this month, okay? Our commissioner does not notify the community about any type of a meeting. Van Struthers invited us to a meeting last week. It was only one person there. You know why? Because the community was not notified. Mrs. Hartman, if I could, with respect, if I can recommend, I, I don't know that this is I would recommend having a having a conversation with with your commissioner, uh, you know, with with regard to with regard to your concerns. I mean that's, I mean that's what we all do, and that's what we're all here for. Um, Mrs. Lyman, I'm sure you want to say something. Name and address, as always, please. Of course she does. No. <laughs> Laura Lehman, 1431 Bryant Lane. This, as you can see, there is genuine 
anguish in the community. You cannot imagine how hard some of these people have worked over the years. They gathered petitions before, they went to meetings, they had their, their wishes known, and nothing was made easy for them. As you know, I have been before this board for 10 years trying to get things like menus in the left-hand thing, getting you all to mail things out to your people. It, I, I went to that HUD meeting that Mrs. Twyman mentioned, and I was the only person at the HUD meeting. The only person. This is where they're making a five-year plan to meet the needs of the people in the community, but nobody in the community knew that it was happening. And that is a township disgrace. And when I butt heads with everybody at this podium and watch you just put your eyes down and ignore me when I am asking you to help inform people. I just saw the front page, I believe, of the new website on the Facebook. I hope, I haven't, I haven't seen the whole thing, so I'll reserve the judgment till I do, but it looked like the left-hand menu that I fought for 10 years to get there with the most important things that people need to find looks like it's gone. And I just tried to get the solicitation on it the other day and, and was not met with, oh, yes, we did take that down. We'll be glad to put it back. Okay. I was met with, well, you know, <laughs> another fight. Okay. It, it's not okay. And this is what you're doing to people in their communities. And there is a community over there that I believe has been very unfairly treated. And it's because they don't have let's say, the free time always to be at meetings. And many of them have second jobs, and many of them do not have the, the same knowledge. And the reason HUD is over there is that we have many constituents with lower income. And it is up to us who have the higher incomes to take care of those in our community with the lower incomes and to show them the way. And I would really beg that we change this model uh, again. And uh, they had, uh, you know, as you know, no notification. But the thing that concerns me the most is when you approve this PAL plan to go forward, very clearly, if you listen to that meeting again, it was presented that the community's in favor of this. And yes, they wanted their own thing, but they know they can't find funding. So they're in favor of this. No, they're not. Okay, as, as these people are here to tell you, and I can't tell you how many hours they've put in already just trying to get over this learning curve. Please help them. Commissioner, please help them. And let's change this. These people need more than others in our township. Somebody just said today. Ms. Lane, I just want to finish you're, you're this last minutes. thought and then, I, and then I'll finish. Thank you for being patient. Someone just said today that many of the people who live over there don't use the pool because of the fee. Okay? That will tell you how much these people need a free place that they can walk to and get to easily in order to become community and learn how to change things. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Can I, can I ask a question? Because I can thought I remember this by all means. meeting. Chief Kelly, I mean, I'm, the, the presentation that was given to us last, I guess, last month on the PAL Center, wasn't it the, the idea that this was a this was, I don't even know how to say it, but this not, the center was going to be open for use by the community also. I mean, it wasn't just, I mean, I think that's, wasn't there, and I, I remember hearing about conversations that went on with the community. I know Commissioner Luker was involved, Commissioner Myers was involved, that, wasn't, I'm going to stop because you're going to answer the question, so you understand where I'm headed. I mean, I thought this was all kind of thought about through the through the process of the master planning of the of this PAL center. Uh, Commissioner, you're you're absolutely right. Um, it's difficult for anybody to predict how much time, how much space, and all of those <coughs> other things, how many groups, and all those things, when we haven't even talked about the size of the building yet. Right. But we've always said. And, and everyone knows that, because I've had members of the community, including members of the group here tonight, um, at 
um, meetings that we've had previously talking about this with members of the community, that that was always part of the intention, that the building would be able to be used by the community, by community groups and so on, with the understanding that the primary purpose was for the children first and foremost, but that that, that did, was not exclusive of the community groups, and that in fact that our intention was to try to partner with different groups to see about using it in different ways. And, um, and, and that, uh, of course, there's, there's not a person on the board, there's not a person on the staff, there's not a person in this room that would want to see a perfectly good building sitting empty when there's people in the community that have valid uses for it. Right. That, that even to infer that would be absolutely absurd. That, that we, none of us believe in that. And, and we and talk, I'm sorry to cut you off, but we talked about this. I mean, the, the, the population that uses the PAL services or the PAL services that exist at this point um, are the people in that neighborhood primarily. I mean, to, to put it over in, you know, in the middle of Meadowbrook doesn't do any, anybody any good as far as PAL is concerned, but also doesn't do, as, do anybody any good as far as the community is concerned that's looking to use this, use this kind of space. And I think that was one of the reasons why we looked at you were, I think, remember correctly, there was a couple of sites in that Willow Grove, Roslyn, you know, northern Roslyn area that we were, you guys were looking at because of the reason that the population of using the space was coming from that area, primarily. Absolutely, Commissioner. As you know, we go to, around the town and pick kids up at different sites. And the most frequently used site um, to be picking up the children is actually Crestmont Park. That's part, kind of what led us to that location uh, to begin with. And um, the other ones nearby are also very near the top. So that's part of the reason. But absolutely, you know, this will, that, I don't think there's any question in Commissioner Luker's mind or in my mind or in Belson Paul with this, that this is not only going to be an absolute dead bang winner for the kids, which is an important issue. But it's also going to be a major achievement for the community and a, a blessing and a gift to the community. I don't think there's any question about that. Just like um, I think if you really think about it, if you had the chance of having a building like this in, in some of your wards, wouldn't, wouldn't you think and wouldn't the people in that community think that that would be an absolute blessing? So, so I think, that, um, uh, I think that, um, that's important. But I do agree with something that's been said here tonight. And I want to throw this out for your consideration. I think the board needs to think about this and decide whether or not you want to build a community center. And uh, if the board wants to build a community center there, that's fine. We support that idea. That's great. Um, and um, we'll, we'll use it hopefully for some of the uh, youth programs and things like that. You know, somebody said the other night that, well, if we got that um, $3 million and that's going to be easy and so on. It's not going to be easy. Raising $3 million for anything isn't easy. It's going to be a lot of work. The only reason why we're halfway as confident about it is because we have, as you know, a pretty incredible team that has come together to help us, help us accomplish this. Some of the most successful and accomplished people in our own to entire township, including Eric Sussman, who's agreed to, to, to chair that process for us, uh, the generosity of his heart. But it is not going to be easy to do that. So I think that's something the board needs to think about. If, you, if you're willing to use township funds or grant funds or whatever else is available to you to build your own um, um, building, I think you need to think about that. And, and if you can and want to do that, that's great. And then we'll step aside. You go ahead and build that, and we'll, um, we'll see about where we can use that. And we'll also make up some other decisions regarding Pound. But before we move forward, one way or the other, we need to know your decision about that. Before we ask these people to go and start doing all of this work and all of this planning and all of this fundraising and so on, we need to know what the board wants to do about that particular piece of property and whether or not the board wants to uh, build their own building there. If you do, like I said, that's perfectly fine. And uh, we'll, we'll gladly step aside in that. But, it, but we need to know an answer on that. Now, we all know that the board always tries to accommodate everyone and usually does a very good job of that, but sometimes you need to make a decision on things like this so that others can go ahead and do, um, do the things that are there too. Um, uh, uh, it, it's, not, it's not a matter of a hurry. It's either a yes or a no. 
If it's, if it's yes, if you think that that's what you want to do, you can take as long as you want. We'll just know what the answer is, and we'll go and go with a dif different plan. But, but the, but the, um, on the other hand, um, if it, it, so we need to know that answer from the board. And I don't think that's a difficult answer. It's either yes or no. And if it's a yes, you know, that's fine. Go right ahead. But, but let me just say this. The, the opportunity to do this is a limited opportunity. It's a narrow window of time that we have to achieve this fundraising goal. When we no longer have um, the people like Lou Klein and, and the people on staff that are um, that with us no longer there to do that, the chances of getting raising that funds go down dramatically. Right now you've got some pretty dynamic people that are committed to helping this thing work out. On the other hand, I have to tell you, they're businessmen that like to get things done. And they're only going to be frustrated to a certain point before they say, you know, okay, we volunteered, but, but, but enough's enough. But the, the, biggest thing, the biggest thing is, it's just a decision. Somebody has to make a decision about that, and, and we'll, we'll move forward with that um, dependent, upon, uh, dependent upon that decision. Thank, thank you very much, Chief. I just want to say, but, you know, I think we're, we're pretty much wrapped up here. Uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Brewer, I'm sorry, you, you, did, you did have your time. If you want to speak to the Chief after the meeting, we are actually about, about to adjourn. I just want to put a couple of things out there. I want to bring to the board. I want to bring. Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Draven. You are, Mr. Draven. You are out of order. Ms. Brewer, with with I wanted to bring to just Ms. Brewer, give with, me thirty seconds, with, please. I I will I, I will grant you thirty seconds, attention. and then we're going to adjourn. Chief, literally Chief, thirty seconds. Chief, you and I met extensively about this, correct? Okay. We were both in favor of a PAL center as well as a community center, correct? Okay. This is, I'm sorry, this is an offline conversation. This meeting is adjourned. Very good. May I say something? The meeting is adjourned. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. The meeting is adjourned, ma'am.